Part two. You guys are here for the long haul. You didn't just see part one and go, I'm going to watch that one day and then not follow through on it. Uh, you actually made it to part two, whether you're following along or you're just cruising. You're lazy. <laughs> no, you could also just be learning. Um, learning by watching. Uh, so we're going to finish off this neon, right? In this, this one video, we're going to get to its final conclusion. So let's jump into it. Uh, so first thing we're going to do, let's just give it the material, make it glow. Let's make this thing glow. So we're going to make it an emission shader like that, just by selecting there. And then we give it a color, a hot pink to go with our donut sign. So if I hold down Z and then go to rendered, um, we would see this. So, um, obviously, you know, there's no glow. Um, so you would see a plane, you would add a plane and then you would see glow. Now, the reason we're not seeing glow is that we are looking at the EV render mode, EV, which is good at real time. And this would be the perfect scene for real time, except that it is the worst scene for real time. <laughs> because uh, that's the one feature that EV does not have, which is mesh lighting. And unfortunately, that's probably never gonna happen just because it's, it's the one limitation of game engines. That's why RTX was such a huge thing is that it was using ray tracing so you could have large different shaped uh, sized um, lamps. Basically, the only way to get mesh lighting for EV would be to actually create little little lamps along the entire way um, but at that point, the amount of calculations, you'd just be better off using cycles. So this is the one scene that you should not use EV for. So we're going to switch to cycles. And when we do so, look at that. You can see that it is glowing. Um, now, I find a value of around about 20 works pretty well. Um, nice and bright. And it gives it that hot white sort of look, which, by the way, is really dependent on the exposure of the camera. Like, I'm just going to pull up some reference here. So this was, again, some photos I took in LA, um, just like literally within like the stone's throw of each other, like just found all these neon signs in different shops. But you can see like with my camera exposure set to um, like, uh, I guess, like the dark area, right? Then the sign looks really hot white. And then uh, when the exposure is turned down, you can actually see the uh, the inner part of it like you got that sort of like outer edge to it and then that glowing inner part so it really depends on it but anyways i want to make mine look sort of like hot white and then we'll add like a, an edge to it um later on okay so let's just rotate our plane move this back that's good and we'll also make the background solid black like so okay now uh, the next thing you might have noticed is like, that's cool, but all these, these lines are connected and it's hard to read. Exactly. So that is why neon signs are, for one, it's why we modeled it like this, so that the, the points go backwards. And when it is back, like everything sort of like this side of the line is going to be black. And how they actually do that, and I learned from watching some videos, um, they actually dip the thing in uh, black paint. And that basically hides it. So it is actually glowing inside that uh, that black area, but it's hidden by black paint. So let's do that. So let's jump to the shading workflow. Ooh, 2.8 with its little workflow features up there. Um, and let's just remove some of this because I don't think we need them. There we go. Um, right, jump back into rendered view. Now, I, when I first approached this, I thought like, well, the way to do it would be to like select parts of the curve and then assign a different material to those curves. Um, but then I discovered you can't even do that with curves. You can't assign part of a curve to a different material. I guess that only works with uh, meshes, meshes, mesh. Do you say mesh or meshes? Doesn't matter. Uh, instead, uh, so, so what, I, what I had to do was um, search for a solution and uh, I came across this guy who made this exact tutorial um, for Blender already and um, it's actually a really good solution. So he came up with this idea that I'm about to teach you. I'm about to steal it and give it to you from my channel instead of his. Um, so I can get those views, right? <laughs> no, it's a uh, full credit to him, Quentin Steink, Steink um, for this, this method. It's a very cool method and I wouldn't have thought of it because I don't like working with gradient textures. Um, which is how you do it. So shift A and we are going to go to texture 
and then select gradient texture. And if you hold down control, shift, and then left click on the gradient texture, which you can only do if you have enabled in your add-on section, the node wrangler add-on. So make sure that's enabled. It should always be enabled because it's a it's the best add-on that there is. It comes with Blender. I don't know why it's not just on by default. Anyway, um, so if you control shift click on it, you can actually preview you know, what you're looking at. Um, so I'm gonna add in a color ramp node right here because the gradient is actually, it's happening here, but it's so faint that it's very hard to see. So by adding in a color ramp node and dropping it between there. Now, if we drag this black part across, you can see what's actually happening. So we've got a gradient effect. Uh, we're just gonna leave it you know, there and let's just drag that to about there. Um, okay, so it's happening, but obviously we want it to happen on this axis, not this axis. So with our gradient texture here selected, I'm gonna hit Control T. And what that does is just a hotkey that'll add in a texture coordinate with a mapping node. Um, and then if you set your X and your Y to 90 degrees, so 90 for the X and then 90 for the Y, um, you would get this, which is not correct, but that is only because our rotation isn't yet cleared. So with our object here selected, if we hit, because we remember it was flat, it was lying down and it was flat. So uh, we just need to hit Control A and then apply the rotation. And now it's actually on the right axis. It's just very faint. So let's go in here and let's just make this like a solid line like that. Ha ha, look at that. And actually if we just flip them around, make the black one on the right hand side, left one the white, then we get the effect that we are looking for. So we wanna make sure that um, all the parts of our text that should be on this side are, cause sometimes you'll have it like, if it's too far that way, you'll have like a little bit like bleeding through, which you don't want. So just make sure it's, and remember it, it, it's paint in the real world. So it's a solid line, a solid incision. So um, actually, is it constant? It's constant. Oh, we could just go constant, even better. <laughs> I didn't even realize. All right. Um, so there we go. So it's all it's all like that. Now, looking at our hot pink white uh, emission shader, how we're going to make this work is we're going to use a mix shader node. Mix shader. Drop this in here, and this factor value is going to control whether you're looking at the the left input or the one on the the, the right input. Sorry, top input or bottom input. So I'm gonna take the output of this and I'm gonna put it into the factor input. And now you can see it's working, but it's the wrong way around. So just flip the inputs and there we go. Ta-da. Uh, now this is cool, but the only reason it's black is because there is nothing in this mix shader here. And it's okay, but every material has some sort of reflectance. Um, it's just some things are more rough or diffuse looking than others. So we should have something here. So what I'm gonna do is add in a principled shader right here, drop that into the middle, the empty input there. And now you can see that that has become this material. So I wanna make that black paint. So black, and you can see it's got a little bit of reflectance now. Um, actually having a look at some, some reference photos of that black uh, material. It's a little bit reflective. Can you see actually on my screen? Where is it? Sorry, I'm just rapidly firing through this, uh, the, these photos. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit reflective, right? So we just wanna have just a subtle amount of reflection like that. And there we go. So we fixed that. Now we have glowing parts that should be glowing and it looks like a donut shine, donut shine that you would see on the side of a building, which is what we're going for. Um, so that's good. Now, a couple of things looking, going back to our reference photos here is that, oh, what's happened? Come on. Windows, okay, there we go. I'll tell you what, I much prefer how Windows handles photos. Like you can just open up a random photo and then go left and right, and then you'll be able to like look on it. Whereas Macs are horrible. It's like you click on it and it's like, you just wanna look at that one single photo. Don't go left or right, it doesn't do anything. You gotta like select them all first, right? I'm sure a Mac user is screaming into their screen that there's a better solution. But you select them all on like a Mac and then you go, hold down space and you preview and then you go left. I don't know, it's just weird. I just wanna be able to like go left and right. That's important to include in the Neon tutorial. So, uh, so there's a couple of things. So if you zoom in here, you can see that there's like a glowing tube inside the Neon here. And 
I'm as far as I know, this is only because this is a modern neon tube. It's probably even LEDs. It's probably not even neon. It's probably not even a gas. But like the old school neons, this is um, I think it's argon gas, argyle, <laughs> argon, argon gas. Doesn't really matter. But that's the red one that gives it the red tint. Um, and then there is uh, I forget the names, but there's basically different gases. Red is uh, is argon. I could be totally wrong, but then they also like color it, so they put um, different uh, gels basically that the tubing is made of different colored gels to actually give them different colors. Um, but red is like it's just going to be red. Um, but I'm sure like this is a modern one. It could be LEDs. Point is, geez, get to the point, Andrew is uh, we, we just want the inside to be like hot, like really bright, and then the outer edge to be like a little darker, right, in color. So how we're gonna do that is add in a light path node. No, layer weight node. Now what a layer weight node is, uh, it enables you to have a look at just the Fresnel. So like if you're looking at it like side on or facing and um, Technically, because it's a gas, like what would really work would be a volume, like using like volumetric scatter going into the volume input. But that adds a lot of computational time. Um, and we've also had, it would have to emit and it's, it's just not worth the effort. So we're just gonna use facing because it's close enough, it does the job. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do, add in another color ramp node like this. And uh, if we flipped it, let's just put this on that side, that on this side. Um, this is essentially the effect that we want, right? Like we want the edge to be sort of a darker part of it and then the middle part to be like a hot white. Um, but we want it to be this pink color. So if we select our white handle there, that's gonna be whatever color we want the neon to be. So if I just drag this pink into there, into the drop color, now we have that look. And if I put this into the color input of that emission shader, there we go. So we've got the hot pink color with a little bit on the edge there just a little bit being um, a sort of a warmer or a darker area. In fact, technically, I guess this should be still be pink, but maybe like a more saturated, darker pink, like that maybe. That might be what it is. I mean, look, this is where it starts to get creative. Like you can really just, I don't know, like how creative, what, what sort of look do you want your neon to be? It's not gonna make that big of a difference anyway. Um, but it's a subtle little effect and it's really it's mostly viewable like when you're at a, a lower exposure or a lower um, Lower strength for your neon. It's the same thing basically <laughs> um, Anyways, so that looks pretty good. That's not bad uh, One thing is missing. Oh, there we go One thing that's missing though is a little bit of gloss on these tubes like there's no reflectance of it So what we're gonna do is right here after the mix shader uh, no, actually, sorry, in between here, because we don't want this like high gloss finish to apply to our black paint. We just want it to apply to the glowing tubes. So, sorry, I'm just bringing up my recording. Make sure I'm still recording. I don't want to have to record the tutorial twice. It happens a lot. You would be surprised. I do the whole, th the whole thing and I forgot to hit record. That's a lot of fun, I got to tell you. So uh, I want to apply it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a add shader like that. And then I'm gonna combine it with a gloss shade. So we're gonna put gloss with the emission. And it's very hard to see, and that's because we're using a rough amount. Um, now when we turn it down, let's just try and get somewhere we can actually see it. Right, so you, do you see that fine little edge there? Little bit of shine, right? Just a little bit of gloss. Maybe down here is more obvious. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Ah, maybe down there, there we go, yeah that little fine amount of gloss there. Now, technically, I, from what I've heard, you, like the add shader shouldn't be used because you're always, you're adding light, um, like energy. There's something called energy conservation in, in 3D rendering, which is like, you don't want to use more, add light to a material than what is hitting it because that's impossible, unless you're dealing with emissions. So I believe this is a case where it doesn't actually matter because it's just, it's, I mean, anyway, the ad shader, it just feels like it's always easier than doing the proper way, which is a mix with like light pass and all that stuff. So I just use add when I'm lazy. And for this case, I'm pretty sure it doesn't even matter anyway. So it looks fine. I'm only going on these like tangents because someone went in the comments will be like, actually should never use the ad shader. <laughs> I don't care. I'm, I'm working on a, 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 a short, short deadline here. 
Um, okay, so basically the neon material is good to go. It's uh, it's done. So now really the rest of it is um, making the rest of the scene look good. Now you could have a concrete wall here, you could have a brick wall. Um, it's really up to you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make mine look like a brick wall. And of course, because I'm wearing a Polygon shirt and because I uh, founded and uh, acting CEO of Polygon, we're gonna use Polygon materials, right guys? Um, yeah, we're gonna use Polygon materials. So uh, yeah, pick it, stone, concrete, bricks, whatever you would like. I'm gonna choose bricks, obviously. So uh, the one I'm gonna use for this is Bricks 22. Um, we're about to revamp the brick collection, by the way. It's a little sparse, so we're adding more to it. Um, and if you if you just got to, if you want to follow along and you don't have a paid account, uh, you can just use this free one. It'll do just the job. I just prefer this one a little better. Um, I think it's just a nicer looking brick, but that will do just fine um, as well. Or, mm, uh, mm. or you could use like a, a painted white one. That one's also free. Anyway, so you download that and we have an add-on as well. Um, it's called this Polygon Material Converter. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. It works for 2.79 as well as 2.8. Um, so all you do is you uh, select the folder that you have downloaded all your Polygon textures to. So I'll just select this one and I'm gonna hit accept. And then what it does is it searches through that and then it will find all of the materials and it, it pulls up the thumbnail as well. Um, so I got a lot, obviously. Um, brushes and, and all sorts of bread and whatnot. Uh, but anyways, the one that I'm looking for is gonna be, oh, does it give you the name? Oh, it does, there you go. Uh, 8K or uh, 3K, um, I just used like gigapixel sort of like up-res it. I was experimenting, but anyway, I'm just gonna use a 3K. And then, uh, once you've selected it, just select deselect all, because otherwise it's gonna try and add in all the ones you selected. So just checkbox that, and then we're gonna hit load one material, and then hit apply replace. Oh, make sure you've got your plane selected, and then hit apply replace. And there we go, look at that. Now what that does is it just adds in all the maps into the correct settings configured for Blender. Easy peasy. Um, it's also got like some handy things if you wanna scale it or tile the, the material, it adds all that for you. So it just saves you time, basically. You could plug it all in manually if you want, but this is just gonna save you time. Now, one thing to note though, is that this, uh, it, we've got a displacement channel, right? This black and white displacement channel. But we also have a normal, normal map. So for those who don't know, like a normal map is for small scale detail and it's a fakery. Displacement map should be for large scale detail and you can use it on your geometry to physically displace a surface. So for something like this, if you wanna get the camera really close, like I did for my animation, um, you actually might wanna see the bricks actually raised off the edge there. So what I'm gonna do, delete this bump map because this bump map is just basically combining the normal with the displacement. So delete the bump and we're gonna take this displacement and we're gonna use the new feature in 2.8, which is um, shader based displacement. So if we add in a displacement node right here, take that and put that into the height input of your displacement, take the displacement and put that into your displacement channel. Now, nothing will have changed, okay? And that is because in your material settings, material settings for your material, you'll have the option for your displacement method, which by default is set to bump only. Um, which would be shaded, like it's a like a fakery, right? That little black and white, basically treating it like a black and white bump map. If we set it to displacement only, now you won't be able to see it because it's actually, it's going through this, this neon. Uh, if we turn this down a little bit, turn down your scale, um, and you still won't be able to see anything. And the reason for that is that it is using the geometry of your mesh to displace um, the material. And because we only have four vertices, it's really struggling with that, understandably. So what we wanna do is first of all, uh, right click, sorry, in edit mode, right click, subdivide, and we're gonna give it, let's say 15 subdivisions like that, okay? Now it's got a little bit more geometry to play with, and you can see there's some bumping and warping happening, but it's obviously not enough, not enough by far. So for the rest of it, I'm gonna use a subdivision like this, which is nice. Uh, the edges are curved, by the way. If you don't want those ed those like rounded edges for your wall, um, you can just select the edges like that and hit Shift E, 
and then pull out and that will create a crease on that edge and ensure that it has sharp edges. Um, but anyways, so uh, now you can actually see we've got some of the brick coming through, which is good. Still not enough, so go up to basically until the level that you want. If you're just looking at it from the front, by the way, you might not even care for most of this this detail. Maybe a flat thing. The, the, the good thing about this, though, is that you'll see that the light is actually getting trapped in the crevices. So it's actually behaving like a real brick brick wall would, which is, uh, which is good. Um, I'm going to go 0 0.08 for the... This scale is obviously the scale of that displacement. So 0 0.08 works well for me. Um, and that's pretty good. Great. So that is our donuts on a brick wall. A um, couple of things you could do to uh, improve the render is, uh, if I can center this properly so we can see it. If you get really close, you'll notice that, um, that there's kind of like it's this jagged cylinder, the uh, the neon. So if you want to improve that, basically in your curve settings, where right where my head is, there is the uh, this setting, resolution. Yeah, resolution, okay. Uh, if you just turn that up, to something like, I don't know, five or six until it looks smooth enough. You know, obviously the higher you go, the longer the render times, but not that long. It's not gonna make that big of a difference. The other thing, and, and that's just gonna improve the, the cylinder smoothness, but then also you've got the jagged edge of the actual uh, curve itself, um, which you could possibly see at certain angles. You might be able to see like a jagged edge. So if you wanted to improve that, yeah, like right there, right? That little jagged part. If you want to improve that, then it's the resolution preview U. So you turn that up to be, I don't know, something like 30, 40. Obviously, the more you set it to, the longer the render times, but not that big of a difference. So that's pretty good. And then uh, finally, if you wanted to, uh, to really, you know, knock it out of the park with realism, build the, uh, the little brackets that things sit on and the, uh, the cylinder with a, a curve, basically there's like a plug. It's just like this smooth plug that comes out the back of it. And then there's one for the other end too. And then I guess they join up to like a transformer. Uh, but you know, you don't have to have the transformer. No one's, you know, you know, creative control and all that stuff. But uh, I'll just show you very quickly um, in, in speed up mode, how you do it. The plug is just a cylinder, which you put at the end. And then you add another curve to be the cord. And then you can join up those, those things. If you want to give it a bracket, it's just a cube, stretch out the cube, make a little uh, little step bit that sticks out. You could maybe join the, the brackets together if you wanted to go ultra realism. And then you should essentially, you know, get something like this. You know, there's, there's always little fiddly steps that, you know, little tiny tweaks that I can't include in a long tutorial, otherwise it'd be, you know, four hours long. It, you know, you just think about it from an artist's perspective of what needs to change. Don't have to follow every little setting that I've that I've done here. But there is one final thing I'll show you, and that is to add glow to the neon. That post-processing effect that happens with a camera, which uh, basically would have like a halo around little objects, um, which uh, is a fun little effect, and it always makes things look cool. So all you need to do is in the compositor, just go and add in a glare node. If I control shift and click on that, um, and then plug the image into that input there, we can see the effect. So, you know, if you wanna go streaks, you could. I usually just turn it like all the way up and then I go with, uh, you know, turn that way down. Or I just like to use fog glow, something like this. Um, and you could choose a high, a high glow amount, uh, sorry, high uh, glow quality, um, which, you know, just tends to, I don't know, I feel like it makes it a little sharper and a little nicer. And then to control the intensity of it, that's with the mix value. If you set it all the way down to minus one, that's gonna be just the original. If you show it all the way up to one, that's gonna be just the glow. So essentially what you wanna do is have it somewhere in the minus range. Like if you go minus 0.5, it's gonna be like 50% of the glow glare effect. So, um, you know, something like that. Oh, the other thing is you can change the threshold so that like, I, but I guess you would, have, you would have noticed that if there was other things that were glowing other than what we wanted to. Um, but you know, something like that. Okay, let's go minus 0.7. So at sort of a 30% glow, you know, you can play around with that, make it bigger or smaller, but uh, that's the basics of it, guys. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up, help other people find it. And uh, I'm gonna put on the screen 
another video that you could watch if you wanted to jump into another tutorial, one that I would recommend starting on. Um, but otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.